I'm Maurice here. So for this video, I want to take a look at the modulus operator specifically, or mod operator for short. Um, if you're not sure what that looks like or have encountered it, encountered it yet, it's just the percent symbol. Um, in computer science, it's called modulus or mod for short. And um, we're going to take a look at exactly what it does. So let's just see what type of operation it is. So let's just go ahead and do 13 mod 7. And if you don't remember, C++ does allow inline math. So it will print a little statement and then it will evaluate this and print out the answer. So let's go ahead and see what it does. So there we go. And it print out 6. Now I bet a lot of you are saying like, what? How is that 6? That doesn't even make sense. I remember when I took my intro to computer science class, I was super confused by the mod operator because it didn't quite make sense to me. I didn't understand if it was doing a percent since it uses a percent symbol, um, if it was some type of division, if it was a difference or remainder, I wasn't sure. So that's why I want to make this specific video since I had trouble with it. I'm sure other people have trouble with it and hopefully it will clear everything up. So let's look exactly what it does. I want to bring this up. So the mod operator, you can think of it as like a subsect of division. So if we do 13 divided by 7, that ends up giving us about 1.8. Oh wow, I'm horrible about this. So let's go back. There we go. 1.857, then a lot more decimal points. I only wrote down this many. Uh, what the modulus does, it's division, but it doesn't care about this part. It uh, returns us the difference. So 7 only goes to 13 one time, right? That's what we get right here. Uh, so what is the remainder? How many digits are left over? And you could do that just by saying how many numbers are away or what's the difference between 7 and 13 since 7 only goes in there once uh, which gave us our answer which was 6 and you could just go ahead and just count that out uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 give us everything we need so that's exactly what modulus does it returns the difference um, so we could go ahead and let's look at another example let's try 29 divided by 12. So only looking at the whole number representation, how many times does 12 go into 29? Well 12 goes in there times 12 by 2 is 24 times 12 by 3 we just went over. So it goes in there twice. And then there's decimal points which we don't care about. None of this we care about. We only care about that, that it goes in there twice. So we have 24 um, since 12 times 2 is 24 now what is that difference from 24 to 29? So it's 5. So that means 29 mod 12 should equal 5. And let's check. So 29 mod 12 yeah and it gives us 5. So that's the easiest way to think about it. Just do the normal division. Uh, you could just go ahead and do it in your head. And just determine the difference. You don't care about the decimal points. You only want the integer division of it. And then just take the difference. And that's what the modulus returns. It returns the, re the remainder for you. And it can be really helpful in uh, specific programming type challenges. So I'll go ahead and just do like a short little one. So let's just do um, int answer. And the nice thing about the mod operator is it allows us to test if anything is divisible by 2. Because if we go ahead and do the mod operator, if something is divisible by 2, so let's go ahead and clear this. There we go. So if I do, let's say, 10 divided by 2, the answer is 5. And there's no remainder because 2 times 5 is 10. So that's perfect. So that means 10 mod, uh, mod 2, sorry about that. 
10 mod 2 is equal to 0. And we can use that in if statements and control structures. So we just go ahead and set this equal to 24. So it's different from our example. So like if answer mod 2 is equal to 0, then see how this is true. I'm right. Else, oops, see out. I'm wrong. Sorry. And I noticed the semicolon mistake right up here. So I was going too fast. There we go. And nine. And let's go and try this out. I should just do the I'm correct statement. Yep, this is true. I'm right. And then you could do the opposite as long as it's not equal to, so that way you want an odd number. Because remember, if a number is even, by definition, is divisible by 2. So if we need to check odd numbers, this will give the other version. I'm wrong, I'm sorry, which is correct. Because 24 divided by 2 should return 0. This thing tests false, goes in there. And that's the power, and that's just a small little example of the power of the mod operator. But just remember, it returns a difference. So just do the division, normally like you would in your head. And then however many times that number goes in there, if there's anything left over, that's what the mod operator returns. If there's nothing left over, it'll just return 0, just like in this example. 2 divided by 5 goes in there perfectly, does not have any type of remainder. And say we, we did... 11. So 11 divided by 2, which would return 5 point yada, yada yada yada. Remember, we don't care about this decimal stuff. All we care about is this 5. Okay, so 2 times 5 is 10, so that means there's a remainder of 1. So 11 mod 2 should equal 1. And let's try that final example. Let's see out 11 mod 2 Okay, 1. Exactly. So I was right. Uh, so that's the power of the mod operator. I want to make sure to spend some time specifically on that just because it can be a little bit confusing and it always tripped me up on like my very first programming exam. Um, hopefully this cleared everything up for you. Remember it's just the remainder for what it is. It's just like a little subsect of division. That's how I always like to think of it in my head. And always, thanks for watching.